Chuck has put together a wonderful agenda for us today, so we will go right to it. Chuck, you're on. Okay, very good. And you should see our little startup here. Well, Lori, thanks again for your help in putting this together. And um, for those of you that have been in my seminars and uh, <clears throat> at training conferences, you know this is something that is near and dear to my heart. And I, I really, we advertise the heck out of this because I think this ought to be near and dear to the heart of every continuing ed person. If there's ever a time, oh, I was going to say this is new now. We have pictures. So again, Lori has been working behind the scenes, and all you hear is that mystery voice. Well, I wanted everybody who might not have had a chance to meet her to see the real person behind that, uh, that, that, that smooth and calming voice back there. So that's who we've got. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about, uh, let's, let's get to the agenda before I get on my soapbox. We're going to talk about the importance of data. That seems silly, but we're going to hit that. We'll talk about the importance of codes. <clears throat> we'll talk about uh, the importance of the W effect in codes and how to find out which Ws are, are recording codes and who aren't. We'll talk about in the statistic report themselves where we go to get them. We'll look at ones that are in our deadbeat report area. We'll be looking at top dogs out of the statistics area. <clears throat> other statistical reports that we think are our favorites, and certainly, of course, the normal summary and questions. So <clears throat> that's our agenda here. Um, I want to go ahead and kind of do an overview at the beginning. And Lori has given me a couple of great uh, subtitles that we could have called this webinar. Um, envisioning the future, finding trends. OK, that's good. Data-driven project management or data-driven course development. How statistics changed my life. OK, well, maybe that's a little much. Inferential statistics rock. Now, I think that that's pretty good. But I guess what we're leading for here is this issue is that you're probably not psychic, and you don't want to guess whether you're using a Ouija board, your magic eight ball, <clears throat> or a crystal ball. You're going to need help to spot these trends. Well, you do have help. Yay! God, I love that. <laughs> so anyway, that's student manager. OK, that was cheesy, but I had to do it. And again, our title was the easy button. Well, the statistical reports in ACEWARE are not quite as much as an easy button, but pretty darn close. So anyway, let's, let's roll the tape back. And again, getting back to the drawing board, the 20,000 foot view of what we're about today. Good statistics, if you're talking about capturing data, start with the three W's. <clears throat> Not www dot, but the will, the way, and again, I'm going to get back. The will, the will is that you as an organization make a commitment. And again, if there are deans out there, if there are directors out there, um, you're the ones who will have to impress upon the organization why, those data, why that data is important. And again, I think that's one of the dilemmas. And again, if you're a, a staff member listening and your dean or director is not around, I know this is a conflict of interest because we're asking you to do more work, uh, basically telling your boss that you want to do more work. But the issue is if you're in continuing ed and you want to keep your job, I hate to be crass here, but this is your self-interest. If you want your program to be successful, if you want there be, to be a budget for continuing ed next year, you're presumably going to have to deliver. And that means using the resources that you've got to bring people into seats, make money on programs, choose classes that will be successful, generate the numbers you're looking for. And you can use statistics to do that. So again, the will to run statistic analysis and capture data that you can use to chart those trends is a key component. And again, that will. Uh, if you've got an a, a enterprising staff member or if you're the director, you work with staff to 
impress upon them why that is so important. Well, the other thing is you need a way. Well, that's easy. The way is student manager, and you already have it. Uh, there are a few folks who are guests setting in, and uh, we'd love to have you on it. But if you've got student manager, you already have the way. And the last one is the WANDA. Well, you say, well, what the heck is the WANDA? Well, Wanda is the poor schmuck registration person who has been working for eight hours, taking phone calls, and on a five o'clock phone call, she takes a registration and is in her swiet, sweetest voice says, and Chuck, thank you for your registration. How did you hear about this class? And she tracks down the tracking code of what promotion brought that registration in, which is one of my key statistical elements that I think you need to worry about. So again, how can I get my staff to capture the data? This is, I guess, again, oriented for the directors out there. Um, one is, if remember your old uh, organizational development or uh, management class about the, Horth, the Hawthorne effect, which was actually an experiment in the early days of the Industrial Revolution. And I think it was a General Electric factory where a researcher was uh, trying to do some things with how to improve productivity. And along the way, they were just changing the lights in the, in the factory. And the point is that by just paying attention to something where employees know that you're watching seem to increase productivity. And so again, this idea of shining your little light on me. If you as a director want staff to capture data, shine a light on the data that you want to capture. And what we have for you is a free report just for attending today, which I just gave the uh, Cheryl to put on the website. But what it is, is it'll be, under, it'll be a report you can download. Uh, it'll be under additional reports, and it's called Regi Hang on. Lori, am I back? I muted myself accidentally. You're back. OK. Uh, this report is called Registrations by Creator Percentage Track. And what it will show you is every user, based on their user login, you can run this report typically by the registration entry date. It will tell the total registrations that party entered, how many interest codes they recorded, what is their percentage of total registrations. <clears throat> and it will, I had a little star on it. We'll take that off for you because we don't want to have to mess with the logo. But it will basically show if you've got above 90%, we'll color that green if you're between 90 and uh, 50, you'll be at uh, black. If the party is under 50% of capturing your tracking code, it'll show in red. And I guess the point is, if you want to track, if you want staff to capture tracking codes, or whatever code, you can use this report and generate a report once a week, once every couple of weeks, Spread that around the staff so everybody knows the percentage of tracking codes they're capturing. And if you do that for a month, I guarantee you that you will have between a 20 and 50% increase in capture rates on whatever it is you're tracking. And um, again, that, that's worth a pizza if you don't do that. OK, now how do you get to that particular report? Uh, if you go to the ACEWARE website, Aceware.com, and again, you have to have your user login. Go to the Student Manager Resources column, and I've already logged in, so it already puts me there. Down a little bit, you get a report guide. Under the report guide is a link to new reports that you can download and import. And there are, if you haven't discovered this, there are some really cool reports that you can look at and download. Um, and we'll, you'll scroll down to the registration uh, reports area. Uh, this, uh, the registration WW account, this isn't up here yet. We'll be in classes. But this report will be up in the registration.
Okay, Lori, I'm back. Lori? Lori, check one, two. I don't know if we lost the whole thing. AJ, can you see, hear me? Okay. Um, I apparently, as the GoToMeeting bounced, or GoToWebinar bounced, I'm apparently on audio, and Lori appears to be now um, getting back. Let me see. Uh, Lori took control back. <clears throat> so Lori should be dialing back in. Let's just uh, give us a second. Um, I'm back with you, Chuck. Hold on a second while we get we things go. rolling again. I think I think we dropped the. All right, guys, stand by. We're we're getting reconnected. I am with you. Can you hear me? I am. I need to be given control. Apparently, you took it back when it bounced. Yeah. Or you need to let me. Here we go. There you All go. right. Let's now let's sure get rid of know. my message. But um, <clears throat> again, we were we were talking about that when you're on our website and you go to the help guide. Uh, under Student Manager Resources, we've got the reports, and um, I think this is where I cut off last time. Under the reports section are a variety of different reports that you can download the report tables to import in, and by clicking on the title sample, you can actually get a PDF. So anyway, that's where you're going to find the new um, registration uh, report uh, that, that we just highlighted. Okay, uh, now let's on with the show. Uh, we've got a lot of reports to cover, and um, again, that's the information where to go and get your report. Coding. Now, we need to, again, go back to the drawing board to talk about codes. Well, with apologies to Shakespeare, with a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, uh, a code by any other name. Um, would be as good as well. Uh, hang on a second, Lori. AJ, you got audio? Okay, AJ says he's got audio, Lori. So. Um, I, I have a couple people telling me that they can't hear, and I'm going to advise them to dial back in, but I think we can continue. Very good. Yeah, I, if, you, if you are having audio, if you're not able to hear, I would hang up and redial your access code uh, because uh, that's what happened to me. So. I can't hear that, though. <laughs> Good point. That's kind of like send me an email if you don't get the email. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, back to the code business. So there, there are basically the four or the three main tables. Of course, the name record, the course record, and the registration record is where you need to make sure you've got your code set up that you need. And uh, for that, we're going to just look up a name record. And again, on the name record, the three main areas for codes that I think are just like deathly important are going to be your source code, which is, again, how did the name find out about your program and they got into your database, your interest codes. What are the interest codes that a student has so that you can market back to them uh, if you're doing professional programs? An occupation code or an organization type code, again, is terribly critical. The other code, I guess, would be the age of the party. And maybe this is more for general interest programming, cultural personal interest programming, capturing an age. Well, a tip here, rather than ask for a birth date, just ask for their year of birth. Uh, birth date anymore is really uh, very much a sensitive personal data item. So a lot of people will just not give you their actual birth day, but wouldn't mind giving you their birth year because just, and then for you, just enter it as January 1st in the birth year, and you'll still be able to get your statistical reports out of that. Okay, so that is the name record. Uh, on the registration record, and I would pick a new class here. That's fine. On the registration record, again, 
<clears throat> the tracking code is probably the most critical. Uh, the other element is, and this is automatically tracked, is uh, who's paying for the registration. That actually is automatically tracked by the system. You don't have to put anything in there. Um, and perhaps the category of the fee. Are they registering under, if you have multiple fee categories, what's the fee category? That's generally uh, one of the key elements on the registration side. On the course side, um, biggest, biggest single one, if you are not using a subject code, use a subject code because if you enter a subject code on a class, any student who enrolls in that class will automatically have that subject code added to their name interest code set. So it cross-pollinates the name set. Um, the rest of the code areas in here would depend upon your needs. Uh, if you have different departments running programs, you put in the different department names. If you've got different coordinators who are responsible for managing the, managing the classes, put their names in here, and then, of course, you can run your analyses on that. <clears throat> One tip, when you're doing locations, if you have locations that are scattered around of cities in your area, states or counties, or you could use one of these for a region, you can actually do statistical analyses based on some geographic code, whether that's city, state, county, or you take one of these and you put in an area of town, northwest, southwest, central, east central, north central, whatever geographic categories that these locations might refer to, that you would be interested in knowing course performance data. Putting it in here will let you have the ability to do statistics on that. Okay, Lori, I'm going to take a breath now. And are there any questions beyond, like, where'd the audio go up to no, this I point? I think you're doing just fine. We're good. Okay, so the idea of tracking the codes. Now, for student manager users, I'm going to show one more thing. <clears throat> and that is, if you're looking at a name record here, and you said, well, wait a minute, I don't see the occupation code live on my screen. Remember that somewhere in your history, someone may have changed the preferences. So you probably ought, if you're rethinking your code business, go back to preferences, make sure that you've turned on the fields, source code, occupation code, organization code. If you want to use, again, birthday, you will need to make sure that field is enabled for your user profile in order for it to show up on the screen. OK. Now back to the show. <clears throat> so we've talked about codes, the importance of those. We showed you a tool that you can use to track fulfillment of those codes to get Wanda involved or Willard, uh, Willie, William. So let's go into reports. Well, Deadbeat, this is my favorite area again. <clears throat> and there are several statistical reports in the Deadbeat area, generally under the additional reports area, Half-Life, First time enrollee, first course registration, learn life history. And again, there are several of these by year, by quarter, by month. Prior year growth, by year, by month, by quarter. And code analyzer. So let's, let's just not dally. Let's go into those. Half-life report. Well, a half-life report in uh, Deadbeat allows you to track uh, when registrations come in in the weeks prior to a class. And again, it's particularly useful for repeat programs, conference planning, or if you've got a particular class that you schedule every year, to get an idea how far out ahead of time do people typically enroll. And so the question is, we're six weeks from the conference. How many more registrations can we anticipate? Or how bad our pre-registrations are? And what the report looks like are something like this. So it tells you the program, and how many days out prior to the start of the class. And there'll be a mark appear when half of the registrations have been received. So based on users' conferences, uh, our users enroll very early. So if we don't have half the enrollments at the six-week notice, that's basically when we know what the final enrollment of that program might be. 
and uh, again, that's that's one called Half-Life Report. <coughs> we'll move on. <coughs> Uh, just real quickly show you where that is, accounting, deadbeat, additional reports, and we won't run it, but it would be half-life, eight-week, and there's a half-life, half -life, nine-week. Okay. Next, next report is first-time enrollee. Now, we've talked a lot about half-life. We haven't talked much about first-time enrollee. The purpose of the first-time enrollee report is to say, how many students out of a group of registrations, and that's based on your query, are first-time enrollees? They're newbies. They're virgins. They're, the, they're new customers. So um, what it will let you do is you run a query for a time frame. It'll tell you the total students that were enrolled in that term and how many of them were first-time students. It'll tell you how many registrations for all of the students and how many registrations for that uh, first time group. <clears throat> and let me run that uh, actually in the system now. So we'll run it for, and this I may not get any first timers because we're going to do 09. The due and paid actually doesn't make any difference on that one. And first time enrollee. And there were, there were no enrollees in my group that were first-timers. Um, so that didn't, uh, again, with my dummy test data, that it didn't come up with any numbers. But for you, you'd be able to see how many of those students were brand new people. Now, this is another rather intriguing one. And this is for those of you who really want to get scientific about programming your, pro your classes. How can we identify those courses that are first-time classes that people take that really end up with a lot of follow-up registrations? It's kind of like, what is it that we can get to hook our students on that makes them come back again and again and again? <clears throat> so again, it's under Deadbeat called First Course Registration. And what it'll tell you is how many people took this class and there was no sub there was no subsequent class. Uh, how many people uh, took the class, and they had more than um, they they have taken subsequent classes. So in other words, they've taken that class, they haven't taken any following that, and the average subsequent class taken the gross money spent and the average money spent on repeaters. The numbers in here for our dummy data is screwy because we. We don't have uh, good data uh, because we, we fake it. <clears throat> but in terms of a first course registration, what you're looking for are classes. If you're running this on your data, you're looking for classes where this column has a lot in it and that the subsequent courses taken is high. Those are the classes that an introduction to management, a introduction to supervision, typically maybe introduction to computers, maybe it's introduction to Excel, that if they take that first time Excel class, then they're taking a whole bunch more other classes down the road. OK. Uh, any questions so far, Lori? Uh, I think the biggest thing is that you have to understand that the query will control what data you're pulling to look at here. Yeah, and I and I, I well, that's 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 so critical. Let me let me get back to that. What we're talking about is when you're running the reports. Oh, accounting. Let's find a report, and we're going to do <coughs> first-time registrations. Um, the uh, the query, which is this step right here. What data? What range of registrations do we want to look at? So if we're wanting to look at um, course, you look at typically courses during a particular term. So if we looked at 07F, we'll look at an old set of courses. And we'll look at first time first course registration. <coughs> that it's whatever based on the data from the fall of 07. So here we had people, first course, no subsequent. There are 
Uh, here's a program right here, management information according to our fake data. That group averaged nine classes after that. Uh, let's go down. Here's another one. Introduction to Word. If that was a real program set, people who took Introduction to Word ended up taking eight more classes. Well, that would mean, by golly, I want to make sure I don't scrimp on Introduction to Word programs. But again, that's based on, again, a sample data set. Okay, let's go back to our slideshow. Life history. Um, this is one that I think is a very, very good report. The other two, uh, first time course and first time enrollee, are a little bit esoteric. This is one you really ought to be paying attention to. Because basically, this is telling you your sticking power, your recidivism rate. How many inmates in your classes from this term come back next term, and the next term, and the next term? And again, this is where, again, the sample time frame refers to the query you, we pick. And what it answers is, what was the past registration history of a group, and or how long are we keeping students around in subsequent terms? <clears throat> and it looks something like this, where if we've got a particular uh, group that we're aiming at, and I don't know what Lori pulled, I'm going to run the real data on this and see if we can deadbeat again, additional reports. And again, the idea is if we wanted to look for students who enrolled in a given year, we're going to look for 07 students. <clears throat> and we'll say yes to the money. If in doubt on that, show me the money, just answer yes. And we're going to do a year analysis. Learn life history by year. You'll note that you may see by quarter, and there'll be time frames. Uh, we need to do an updated quarter history because we have to hand code for the time frames on these reports. <coughs> what we should be seeing, if my dummy data behaves correctly, is that in the year 2007, we have 100% of enrollees. And my, my column is too narrow to show 100%. But what it'll show me is, OK, prior to 2007, how many students were there in 06? Well, 72%. How many were there in 05? 58, 50. Whoops, nobody was there back in 03. And then going on to following years, how many enrolled the next year? How many enrolled the year after that? And you're going to typically see what's called a bell curve, where the numbers on either end of this will taper down <clears throat> because of the typical, you know. And obviously, your goal is to keep that bell curve so that your number is high for as long a period of time before it drops off at the end. OK, well, I think we're doing good time-wise, Lori. How are we doing on questions? Anything? Uh, I think we're doing just fine on questions. Don't have All right. Well, we're plugging along. That's life history. <clears throat> Prior year growth. And boy, this is a number that everybody is nervous and anxious about with uh, <clears throat> enrollments uh, levels and how they're going to do this year and the next, uh, next year or two. How are we doing compared to prior years? <clears throat> well, this is, again, one that you can run by year, by quarter, or by month. And this is a year analysis where you would say, compared to last year, here's how many we had and how much is the number change. Now, I'm going to go to live again on this. It's deadbeat again. And here's where the query really is important, because in order to do a, a long-term analysis, we have to pick a set of course begin dates that will span multiple years. So we're going to pick course begin date within a range of dates. <clears throat> and we're going to say back to 04, 01, 01, 04 through the present. And Shift F2 gives us today's date. And we'll actually make that through July. <clears throat> Show me the money, sure. And we're going to do prior year growth by year, and just look at some gross numbers. And that will then analyze for the query set we did. How many people did we have in 03? How many people did we have in 07? Well, we were down 6 or down 18%. 06, we were up 14 or up 51% from the year before. 
So this will tell you your growth uh, relative to prior year uh, for the programs. Now, the query we just run, now let me go back and run a little nuance of that, and I'm going to do recycle because we're going to stay here for one more report. <clears throat> if we wanted to do a uh, begin date range, and we only wanted to do that for a certain topic area of classes, that previous one was for all classes, okay? We just said all classes meeting between two dates. If we wanted to compare that to how enrollments have been in our computer classes, then we would need to add to the query a subject code. So we're going to do that. Course begin date grader. We're going to say anything after 010104. And we want a subject code equal to computer. And let's rip her out. And I don't remember the previous set of numbers, but We'll see how good your mem short-term memory is. <clears throat> Cranking the numbers. OK. So you could run the total report, run your groups by topic or subject code, and see whether or not computer classes are, pre are behaving stronger or less strong. Are they bullish or bearish compared to your regular numbers? It looks to me they're doing down. It's a downward cycle here. And again, that's where analysis of your data can help you make those program decisions about do we do more computer classes, do we shrink them <clears throat> to, to run the program. OK. Uh, back to the show. Prior year growth. Code analyzer. And where I said that the other two were kind of esoteric, this is one that really is um, it, it is tremendously powerful. It's also kind of hard to wrap the brain around, but we're going to give it a try. <clears throat> it basically allows you to say, what are the characteristics based on a code, in other words, interest code, subject code, uh, occupation code, of a particular group of people? So what it's going to look like, it's, and that's, again, for the advanced statistics guru, um, is that this is one that would be done on zip code. So we would say, for this zip code, which is a bogus, well, I guess a zip code, how many people in that zip code have these interest codes? So for the zip code 08854, two of them have this code, two of them have this code, two of this, two, two, two. Uh, how many people have an occupation code? Well, the stars mean nobody had any occupation codes. Two of them are working for an organization code coded MD. So you can do basically a code analysis of any, whether that's by zip code, it could be by community, and be able to analyze what is the interest code breakdown of a particular zip code, or a city, or a state, if you're doing regional or national type programming. And again, where that report sets, uh, and I'm going to actually modify. So if you've never seen modify, here it goes. We're going to look at um, all register. We're going to look at a group of people here. Uh, course number begins with. I've got to make sure. Hang on a second. I want to make sure I've got that code. An yeah, we are in code analyzer modify. Course number begins with, and we're going to look at registrations who registered for last year. Code Analyzer. And again, the Code Reporter, Code Analyzer, the report, when you go to modify, actually has some notes in it as how you might be able to edit it and modify it to meet your needs. And again, if you'd like to delve into this, I would love to have a chance to visit with you about that. But basically, it uses a function called Code Report, where you have to, based on the order by that you're using in the Just Do It, you can put in the field or the, the code value you want to do an analysis of. And it'll basically say, OK, for the interest code, uh, 32304, there was one computer interest, one interested in management, and one interested in statistics. So in terms of giving you a kind of a bird's eye view of all the codes in a particular area. 
Okay, code reporter. No. All right, let's go back, and we're going to get to see something different now. The other statistical report area is actually in statistical report group. The names, demographic summary, performance summary, and there's actually a similar one for course, demographic summary and performance analysis. So we're going to look at the names first, and one of my favorites, and Lori couldn't resist this, the top dog report. What the top dog report lets you do is rank order people by either the names or the companies by fees paid, and let's just jump to the data. And again, this report is one that I like so much it has a shortcut key to it, names, statistics, performance sorting, or top dog. You can do it by names or by companies. You can do it based on fees paid, courses taken, CEUs, hours, or credits. You can report the top 10, or you can put in the top 10,000 records, as many as you want, if we say the top 20. <clears throat> and we're going to let that run. And this is, again, you pick a time frame. OK, we want to go for the current year, 09. Show me the amount due. And we're going to get a rank order of students based on the money paid. Here's the top 20. Gosh darn, looky there. With that stimulus spending, guess who popped to the top? Sarah, and followed closely by his nemesis. Anyway, so that will tell you your rank order of students based on fees paid. A um, couple of things you could use this for. If you need students to participate in advisory panels or consulting groups or focus groups, here are your top students. Invite them to participate. Recognize these students. If you want to have a frequent flyer program based on the top 25 students get dinner with the president, or they get to have pizza Friday afternoon with some program coordinators, and you just say, thanks, we appreciate your patronage. We'd like to invite you to join us for some informal pizza. Um, back to the query again. Statistics, names, performance sorting. One of the other things you can do, again, now we did this again. We did everybody. If we wanted to do course number and a subject code, Again, if we wanted to know, well, we would need to add course number begins and the subject code. If we wanted to know just for people who took computer courses, and it didn't have anybody on there. Uh, but you could add a query to only get people who are from a certain year that have taken computer classes and see who your best students are. OK, questions on the top dog? Anything popping, Lori? We're doing OK. But you know, uh, one of the things that, that I found, some, one of my customers uses that top dog, goes mm -hmm. in and puts a pop-up on the names that are the top 10. Their oh, oh, now there you go. Good. That's yeah, interesting. Their registration folks have the authority when that's on their name to do whatever it takes for those people to keep them happy. What Lori's referring to on the name record, I'm going to pull up my name, and when I pull it up, you'll see the pop-up. Well, what you can do is actually go into the history and say, is a, so again, when we go to Catherine's record, I didn't, I didn't, oh, I have to put that in here in special needs. Sorry about that. So anyway, when we go to Catherine's record, and the registrar knows that they're one of the top students, like as Lori said, they're basically given permission to make deals, help them out, do whatever they can. Basically, those are your best customers. They're your VIPs. That's a, that's a good idea. Great, great suggestion. OK, top dog on the course side. Well, uh, there is a similar set of statistical reports down under statistics courses performance review. What this lets you do is sort your rank order your courses by income, enrollment, CEUs. And under income, you can rank by due, paid, balance, or net. Report the top 10. Again, you can do it by a general area, which is course number only. We'll look at 09 again. 
and our little cute sounds. So this tells us, based on the total due, what are our top 10 courses so far this year? Now again, if you're using, if you've got um, Pocket Ledger and you're tracking expenses, you could also choose to sort it by net, which is probably for your births are a more important figure. How much are you netting on those classes? But again, it actually shows all of the paid due, balance, enrolled numbers, and um, you can use that as a way to see which courses are your top courses in that area. Um, top dog courses. Uh, demographic summaries. This is the other half, the top half of the statistical reports. So that under statistics, names, demographic summary, what you can do is pick an element on the name record. Anything in the group, name, firm, city, state, zip, ethnicity, education level, age and years, um, and do an analysis of how many people registered. We're going to use city for my data. Uh, we're going to go to the current year again. Alt F1 repeats the course number. We want them out due. And that will tell us per, where's my pointer? Come to me, pointer. That will tell us by the city um, how many names came from the city, nose count, how many registrations came from the city, the total due, percentages thereof, and the average enrollment from each registration from that particular criteria. So it's basically a cross-tab analysis. You pick, you pick the, uh, well, statistics, names, demographic summary, recycled report area. You pick the category. That's the variable. And then you run the data against it. Again, we could have done the data rather than going just the city analysis uh, where we did all courses in 09. We could have said courses in 09 at the query level that are in the topic area computers. And we could see whether there's a difference between which cities are sending people to computer classes versus the art classes. I'm going to pick age down here to show you something why age is something if you're tracking at at least the birth date you can do. When you pick age in years and you pick a data set, course number begins with 09, you get an option to say how do you want to sort your course, your people? Your default sets are age alone, which would give you, you know, from two years to 99 years, how many people in each group. A five-set group uh, for mainly adult work, a nine-set would be if you have youth, uh, where you'd include zero to five, you know, elementary, high school as well. We're going to use a five-set. We're going to do a Mount Dew. And it'll basically tell you, by the category of people, how many people do we have within the age range, okay, missed a birth date. Within the age range of 26 to 35, here's the people, here's the registration performance. Within this age group, the people, the number of registrations, et cetera. So this allows you to do your, your age life cycle kind of analysis of where your people are in the age on the life cycle chart if you're doing stuff and be able to do the analysis. Again, they, if you wanted to do this by program area, you'd want to do one totally to get the baseline and then you'd run it a second or third or fourth time where you'd pick subject code equal. Personal interest, what's your breakdown? Professional development, what's your breakdown? And kind of get an idea of what age groups those courses are attracting. I hope that's kind of making sense to people because that's really where uh, we're getting at. I'm going to go directly into the course side now. We'll go back to the PowerPoint. There is a similar set of statistics on the course data side, where we say, pick a field on the course. Well, maybe we want to know, well, subject code. We want to know by subject code how are our courses performing for a time frame. We're going to do 09 again. So what this is telling us is, let me see if I can get this to full screen. Shrink that just a little. There we go. Can you see that, Lori? Is that too small? That's very good. 
Okay. Um, what that's telling you then is for the subject code, how many classes were held or were, were scheduled, how many had to be canceled, how many enrollments were there for each class, how many enrollments had to be canceled. Notice the, the cancellation rate. Boy, I do it. Lori and I do a super job of keeping our people. What's the average enrollment per class held? Okay, well, maybe our numbers aren't so good. One average, that's not the best. Average course fee, net income. By program area, if you would, the, the, the category. So again, that is a report area that really is one that lets you do bird's eye view of classes. You'll note in here that there are a variety of options, department account number, subject by instructor. We mentioned location earlier. Let's run that. Location, course number begins. Now, when you do location, you have an option to say, by the location, which is your whole location reference, if you do the split location and do building and room, you could do it by building. If you're filling in that city and state fields that we talked about, you could do it by city and or state or whatever uh, regional code you put in those. We'll pick city. We're going to do our 09 group again. And that will break down then Lincoln, Manhattan, New York, and Topeka. How many classes have we held there? How many had to be canceled? Enrollment, enrollment, etc. Again, lets you analyze where physically you're holding classes to see if that's beginning to make some differences. Again, um, you would want to run a total run, run like this, and then perhaps do it again by your major business line category, personal interest versus professional versus computer, whatever, versus elder hostel, however you might want to break that out. OK, we're getting close to the end time, and I got a couple more. I think we're getting close to uh, the end of the shoe. Why would you do demographic summaries? We've kind of talked about that. Course data, we've covered that. Coordinator, the review, one of the options there was to sort by coordinator. So department heads, pay attention. Um, Statistics, oh, gosh, 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 we've got to do this. Tracking codes, probably the other report. And, you know, as far as statistics, is the tracking code reports. This is where, if you're asking Wanda to ask the student, Ms. Havlicek, how did you find out about this class here at Ace Where You? You're going to want to report on it. So there are two levels of tracking code reports. The uh, mother of all tracking cord code report and the course level. We're going to do the mother of all first. So we want to show the amount due. We're going to pick 09 again. And this will tell us for this year, of all the promotions that we've run, how many registrations have we gotten from them? How many of them, what percentage they are of the total, the income received, and here's the number you're looking at. What is the return on investment for every dollar we spend on promotion, how much money are we going to get back in terms of return? That's going to make you decide, do you buy the cable TV ad or not? Well, if this was real numbers, you get 40 cents back on the dollar. Is that going to be one you're going to do again? No. How about MVAEA newsletter? Well. We got seven and a half dollars for every dollar we spent in there. That's a keeper. Generally, you're looking for a four to one or a five to one return uh, is considered a good return on investment for a promotion code. Lori, we had a poll question. Let's before people run away, let's get that poll question out. I've been carrying on. I did not pause for that. I'm going to take a breath and let's do a poll, and then we can start hacking at the. I just have one more report to show, and we're going to get into uh, questions. This is probably a poll we should have run at the beginning. I know, and I, 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 yeah, I, I okay. we were to carrying on. responsible for running statistical reports, and in this particular case, you can check all that apply. Oh, cool. OK. Yeah. That's great. That's so great. Go ahead and answer more than once, if you would like. And we'll give it a few seconds to get all the data in. And I, I have to tell you, as an audience, uh, this is one of the highest percentage attended one. 
normally you get 50% shrink on a webinar. Uh, we're at almost 70% or 75% attendance. So uh, that's awesome. That's great. And, and again, I hopefully it, I'm going to see some good numbers here in a second. All righty. Let's go ahead and close the poll. Now, I'm not and seeing the poll. Do I have you? to? Oh, can I? I'm not seeing the poll. I'm a you're not seeing the poll, then let me tell you. The 25% of the directors and departments heads run okay. reports. 56% of the coordinators there are. All right, all right. Far. Good, good, good. Course coordinators. Marketing staff, office manager, 27%. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Registration staff, 38%. And, oh, goodness, we don't run those stinking reports, 17%. <laughs> that's great. Well, I, I, then we've got believers. We're, we're talking to the choir, and that's great. So... Uh, uh, let's let's get a couple more under our belt and try to get into some of those questions. And so, okay, uh, oh, get back to the show here. Statistical reporting. Uh, oh, one more uh, report. I'm sorry, but there's a statistical report uh, globally by tracking code for a group. The other way of doing that is to run it by course. And this is, if you would, the micro level where this was the forest level. This is the tree level. So we're going to do a Mount Dew. We're going to do for a particular year, our current registration time frame. This is nice because this lets you analyze per program area what promotions are generating registrations per each individual class. So for this particular class, we see that newspaper and past mailing generated half the enrollments. And, of course, my, my numbers for statistical analysis are kind of thin. But you get the gist that this lets you analyze on a micro level uh, what kind of uh, promotions uh, you get. Because you may find that an arts class is going to have a different set of uh, referring codes than with the business or the professional development class. And you program accordingly and you market accordingly. Okay. Uh, finally, don't forget. And again, my favorite two function keys, F2 and F9. And I've done this again and again, but I'll do it again. F2 is really not so much a statistics, but a quick count view. If you're working on, if you're in a program and you're doing something, boss wants to know, hey, how many classes next week? Hit F2, 15 days out. You get the list of classes. It tells you the number enrolled. You close it and you're right back doing what you're doing. F9 is yet another one in that it will actually tell you how many registrations do we have based on a time frame. So if I wanted to know for this week how many registrations, well, there are 11 registrations this week. Two were from the web, 18% from the web. Last year, we had none this time. So boy, we're really doing great compared to last year. Now, the top part shows you classes in the next 30 days, based on this date range, that are less than the minimum or within five of the max. Well, we have four that are less than the minimum. If we want to know what they are, we click on the title, drag the mouse a bit, and up the title will pop up. Drag the title, move it, the, the title pops up. Or we can double click and actually go to see the class itself. Now the top button, if we take courses within five of the max, will show us courses that are almost full. And those are ones we've got to open other sections for. Student manager, boy, those student manager classes are filling up. So we need to ask Lori to, budget a few, or to, to book a few more. So again, multiple ways to do this. Uh, this is really more monitoring current activity uh, and again, you can scope it by coordinator. You can say, well, for Havlicek, what's his numbers look like this week? Uh-oh, only three my registrations came in. Let's look at Travers and see how Jeannie's doing. Ha, Jeannie got six. So again, a way to basically do quick looking at some numbers in the sequence. Lori, I think we have really kind of run, uh, and we, we talk about the weakest link business that uh, if there are numbers in your program that you can identify those weak link classes, um, uh, that 
will help you uh, decide which ones to kill and strengthen your program considerably here. So, okay, uh, questions, comments, next programs. We've, we're at the hour, but uh, let's see what questions we've got. Uh, if you have more than one registration fee on a course, Emily wants to know, is there a report to tell you how many registrations recorded with each fee? Absolutely, and we're back to statistics, names, demographic analysis. So we go statistics, names, demographic summary. One of the options in this, if you scroll down, is registration fee description. So we'll run that for 09, and basically that will let you say how many people registered early birds registration senior staff? I think that's what she wants. Next. How about a report that shows coordinator performance? That was where we were. I just said that 30 seconds ago. Hopefully that was asked before I mentioned that. Under statistics, course, performance, well, we of course, data summary, you can pick the coordinator name on that list and, again, do the same kind of thing. So pick the time frame, <clears throat> and so here we go. Bushke, Havlicek, Travers, right there. Again, on this statistical report, now I'll tell you, if you want to do anything to analyze about the name, the registration, or the firm, you can do it from demographic summary. If you want to have anything to do with analyzing the course performance, you can do it in course data summary. So what we're saying, let me reiterate, any field that you see in this form, I don't want to do that, this form, or this form, you can use as an element to do statistical analysis in the name one, and again, any field you see in the class record, any one of the fields in this record can be used as an element uh, when you're in statistical reports. And why do I say that? Because one of the options is user-defined field. If we wanted to know the first name breakdown, this is silly, but we're going to do it. Names, NM, name one, you have to know the scientific name. I want to know how many people, how many Chucks and how many Bills and how many Lorries took classes this term. Okay, there they are. Adam, Artis, Barak, Chuck, Charles, Jenny. So the silly, but the point is, anything on that record you can run an analysis on. Okay, I was I was ranting, but never mind. Next. <laughs> it was a fun report. It was a fun rant. I love it. <laughs> uh, I have a couple people, and this will be our last question, asking about the selection where it says recycle report area. And while that's a little away from the context, I have enough folks asking that I think. Right. Okay. Um, Deadbeat report area. Now, again, deadbeat is a report area that I have a shortcut key, Alt-D, because it's one of my favorites. When you do recycle, if you don't do recycle report area, when we run a report, this closes and we have to go back up here, pick the report again. When we do click recycle and we run a report, okay, we've run a report. That's a standard report, which is really uh, registrations with balances. OK, I'm going to say no. With recycle checked, it loops me right back to this screen so I can do the other report I want to do. So when you're doing statistics, you know, click recycle, and then you run a new query every time, pick a different report, but you don't have to go back reports, accounting, deadbeat to get to this. It just basically lets you cycle inside the uh, particular report area that you're in. And the sister button to that recycle query? Is recycle query. The difference on recycle query and for what we're doing, because we use what's called a just do it, which modifies the report, a recycle query lets you, well, you hover over it, view all reports in this area without having to run another query. And this is useful when you're looking at standard reports and you're trying to see what format of report you might be interested in best. And we'll, we'll show that real quick if that's the last question. If I wanted to know which report in Deadbeat I might like best, 
I'm going to let it run default for a time frame, 09. And we run the numbers. OK. So do, 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 do. Oh, great. And that blew out. I think I've got too much stuff going. Oh, there it is. Here we go. Um, so there's the standard report. I close it, say no to print, and it asks me, do I want to look at another user-defined report using the same data that I just did? And say, sure. All right. Well, I want to look at, um, I need to find a plain report because so many of these have just do it's in, a letter style confirmation. All right, so what's that? Well, let's see here. And I ignore. Oh, golly, it's a letter. OK, well, that might come in handy for some things. No, let's look at another one. OK, but you got the idea. It basically lets you cycle around through the system and look at different styles of reports without having to run a query. If you've got a large database and you're just snooping around, it lets you look at format without waiting around for the query to arrive. OK. And again, um, uh, let, me, let me close with a couple of uh, reminders. Number one, regional meetings, regional meetings. Oh, there is my flip-flop. Coming up in May. And you'll note that we have one more webinar before the regional meeting. And then we're going to take a break, and we'll come back after the regional meetings. For those of you that are first-time attendees of the webinars here, let me remind you that when you go to the website, there is a link called Webinar Archives. And again, some of the webinars we have are restricted. You have to have a support agreement. But a number of these are open. You can download and view the webinar. And Lori even put together, if you're looking at new, a new user and you're trying to decide where to start, there is a webinar self-study guide that you can review to see what webinars would be good depending on your role in the organization. Whew, we covered a lot, Lori. How are we doing? Everybody ought to be tired by now. I think we're all tired. But <laughs> most of everybody has hung in there. We've had a, a few that broke out for lunch, and I think we're all ready to go now. All righty. Well, I, again, Lori, thanks for all your help in putting this together. And thanks for you guys to be about being interested. Uh, one of the things, I, are you, did you ask the question about a suggested report that you didn't see? As everybody leaves the session today, yeah. they should get that question where they can put in a suggestion for a new statistical report. Yeah, well, again, we love your feedback on that. And again, if you've got a question about a report that's in there, uh, you got an idea on a new statistical report, write it down, shoot an email to Lori or I, because um, the, flex the system is tremendously flexible. Uh, and, and again, it's just coming up with a, a need that we can help you fill. Uh, we should be able to do it. So again, remember the upcoming webinar. Uh, we hope to see many of you at the user meetings. And uh, Lori, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care. Alrighty. Bye-bye, everybody.